In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep. Perhaps we will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. Our, O Lord of hosts, who you test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Seeking hearts will revive, for the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who has come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. And even the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm very blessed to be able to preach today on this occasion of Deacon Father Drew's first Mass. Takes a minute there, so let yeah, praise God. God is good to our parish, God is good to our church, God is good to our world in bringing forth this priest to serve us, to serve you, to serve the people of God. I think the, the way to look at these readings in this day is through one of the lines of our second reading in Paul's letter to the Romans, where St. Paul says, the gift is not like the transgression. So let's think about that as kind of the, the thesis statement for how we interpret these readings. The gift is not like the transgression. So in order for us to understand this, we have to look at what the transgression is and then what the gift is. St. Paul says to the Romans, the transgression is the sin of Adam. Adam's first sin, Adam and Eve rebelling against God, choosing their own way, not following what God tells them to do, not wanting to live in covenant relationship, in obedience and in trust of God, but going their own way. And because Adam and Eve are our first parents, that transgression, that sin, 
is like a virus that gets into the human strain, gets into our DNA. And so all of the children of Adam and Eve, you and me, are born with this virus of sin. So St. Paul says to the Romans, sin reigned from Adam until Moses. Even those who didn't sin the way Adam sinned were infected by this virus, by this transgression. St. Paul continues to say to the Romans that sin has broken into the world. And what does this sin do for us? Well, it does two things. It gives us that original sin, that original virus or brokenness that we're born into, and then it makes it easier for us to disobey God. It makes it easy for us to turn away from God or hard when we want to say, I want to do what God calls me to do and not live as the world calls me. We don't have to look very hard to see where the transgression has taken hold in our world, in the brokenness that our world has. Right? The strife between peoples, whether it's racism we see present in our world, whether it's hatred in our heart or rivalry, whether it's jealousy or selfishness, it's easy to see where the transgression has taken hold in our lives, in our world. And the transgression is serious. Jesus says, our Lord says in the gospel, that don't be afraid of the one who can kill just the body, but be concerned about the one who can kill the body and the soul. And Jesus says, be more worried about sinning than you are about surviving physically. Right? So we should be more afraid of sin or, or more concerned about not sinning than we are about putting our seatbelt on when we get into a car. And it's good to wear your seatbelt, right? We should be more concerned about avoiding sin than we are about changing the battery in our smoke detector. Right? Our Lord tells us sin does something horrible to us. It turns us against God. And if we die without repenting, turning away from that sin, then we're separated from God. That's what our Lord says about be concerned about the one who can kill both the soul and the body. So the transgression is bad. Sin is bad. It rips us away from God. But the gift is not like the transgression. If the transgression, the sin, the virus is bad, the gift is infinitely greater. The transgression can't come close in the amount of bad it is to the level of good that the gift is. Because the gift is Jesus Christ himself. God in the flesh come into our world. And Jesus says to Philip in the Gospel of John, where Philip says, show us the Father. Jesus says to him, Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And so Jesus coming into the world, the gift of Jesus, is to show us who our Father is, who our Father in heaven is. And Jesus breaks this open for us in today's Gospel where he tells us about the heart of his Father. You know, the whole mission of Jesus, even dying on the cross, is to show us who our Father is. And it's no, it's no coincidence, it's God's providence that we look at these readings on Father's Day to say, what does it mean that I have this kind of Father in heaven? A Father who spares nothing for me, but is willing to give his only Son so that I can be not just forgiven of the transgression, not just have my sin wiped away, but that I can enter into eternal happiness. I can have a joy that the world can never touch, that my Father in heaven wants to give me something that is infinitely beyond my imagination, my greatest hopes and desires. This is who our Father is. This is who the good father, the father of Jesus, the one who Jesus wants to point us to is. And so our Lord says in the gospel, are not two sparrows sold for a small coin and yet one of them falls to the ground, not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. 
just to think about the knowledge of God, right? That he knows we don't often buy sparrows, or at least I don't. Maybe you're in the habit of buying sparrows. That's not a regular practice of mine. But just think about like the number of squirrels you see outside, right? Think about mice in the world, insects. God knows each and every one of them. Nothing happens to an ant or a mouse or a mosquito without God knowing it. Our Lord says in the gospel, even all the hairs on your head are counted. Right? There's a, a different variety of the amounts of hairs on people's heads here. Right? God knows every single hair on your head. Our Father in heaven knows everything about us. He knows what we're most proud of. He knows our deepest, darkest secrets what we're ashamed of, what we're embarrassed about. He knows us inside and out. He knows you inside and out. And he died, he sent his only son to die so that you can have eternal life. Because he'd rather have his son die on the cross than spend eternity without you. That's the dad, the father you have in heaven the one who loves us and knows us with perfect knowledge and wants us to be with him. But because God sent his son Jesus in the flesh, the way God operates, the way our father operates, is not just that we think about him, that we have some kind of esoteric knowledge about him, right? The way our father operates is to give us concrete things so that we can know his love. So when Jesus says, take this and eat, this is my body, we get to participate in that, not in just some kind of mental way, but we get to take what looks like bread and looks like wine and receive that. When Jesus wants to wash us free of our sins, we don't just think about that, but we use water so that we can understand, we can see the incarnation, the, the material way God loves us. And when God wants, you to, wants to show you how good and loving his father is, he gives you a spiritual father, a person in the flesh. We, we pray in the uh, ordination rite just a couple of weeks ago for Father Drew that God has set him apart for ministry. He has consecrated him, made him holy, H-O-L-Y, and made him holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, his own. That Father Drew has given up a wife and family, given up pursuit of money, glory of being a BMX star, or all the, all the things that were on his heart before the Lord took a hold of him, and set him apart, consecrated him, so that you and I would know the love of God the Father. That's why we call him Father. That's why it's a beautiful thing to celebrate on Father's Day today. That God doesn't want you just to think about the Heavenly Father in some kind of mental realm. He wants to give you an incarnated substantiation of what a good father is. Now, all of us are called to imitate God, and we all do that imperfectly. But God has chosen to work through Deacon Dr Father Drew, man, chosen to work through Father Drew so that you would know how deeply you're loved so that you would know your Father in heaven has taken every pain, every effort, so that you can be free from the transgression, so that sin cannot rule in your life, but that you can have a gift that is infinitely greater. So when you look at Father Drew, I hope you see God's love for you, made present in this world, that God the Father loves you and gives you the gift of Jesus and the gift of this priest so that you can share the true gift of eternal life, communion with God forever in heaven. We praise and thank our Father today that he has given us this priest to be our spiritual father because the gift is not like the transgression. 
the gift is infinitely better. Thank you, Jesus. Before we profess our faith, if I could have all the fathers please stand. We'll say a little blessing here on this Father's Day for you. Almighty Father, we give you thanks that you are a good Father. That you are such a good Father, are so in love with each of us by name that you've sent your Son for us. Lord, bless these, your beloved sons, whom you've given the grace of fatherhood to. Father, just as you've sought us out in Jesus, form their hearts, grant them confidence in you, hope in you, being rooted in you, to then go out and to seek out the hearts of their children and to bring their children an ever more deeper union with you. Bless them this day. Renew them in the joy of your salvation. Grant them your peace and your grace. And fix their eyes always on you, Lord Jesus, for you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, fathers, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together let us... (laughs) Together let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. To our Heavenly Father, we offer our prayers and our needs. For the Holy Father, may he continue to grow in holiness and wisdom in his services to the living and true God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders and those in authority, may the Lord provide his grace for the peaceful resolution of conflicts in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all 2020 graduates, may God's love give them courage as they begin this new phase of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the fathers or father figures in our faith community, that by sharing in the Eucharist, they may grow in unity and faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all that we keep in our hearts, and for those we are asked to remember, especially Clemente Bove, Rocco Iacobacci, and Antonio Casasanta, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, especially Father Tim Mazur, Norm Grifka, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially 
Joe Gripe, Lisa Sanchino, Betty Shantz, and Jan Stephanician. May they find eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, graciously attend to these and to all our prayers and all the intentions that we uphold in the silence of our hearts and in your great mercy. Be pleased to grant them, for we make them all in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, 
the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your priest, high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life. Come, say the word for my salvation.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. and 1 to 3. That is the parish offices open 9 to 11 and 1 to 3. And the staff can handle many requests, including mass intentions by phone. There will be no weekend office hours at this time. And just a personal comment, I know many of you share my feeling when I say how proud I am to be here with Father Drew for his very first mass here at St. John Vianney. It's been wonderful being with him for the last year, and congratulations, Father. Thank you. I kind of would have said all this before I was ordained a priest while I was yet just a deacon, but I want to thank Father Tim for your gracious hospitality to me for a year and showing me the robes, putting up with me, and uh, your patience with me as I learned how to quote-unquote deacon and uh, even preach and all of those things. So I'm very grateful for your ministry, for your witness to fatherhood, and for your priesthood, and uh, thank you so very much. Also, a thank you to everyone here at St. John Vianney. I'm really, really grateful for having been assigned here. Um, it was a delight to be with you all, and I pray that the Lord Jesus somehow used me and I didn't get in the way too much. I want to honor Father Polis, uh, deacon here, and how many deacons do we have now? We just added another one. Two to three. All the deacons um, and all the staff. Thank you all so much, and Sarah and everyone who makes everything possible here. I'm really, really grateful for you all. I've loved being a priest. It's been the greatest two weeks of my life, and uh, it's an honor, a, a true honor. So please pray for us that we might be faithful uh, all the days of our life to Jesus. Oh, yes, sorry. It's good that he's here. Um, I am being assigned to St. John Fisher, which is in Rochester Hills. So uh, I would certainly welcome you all to visit me once in a while. I uh, would love to see you. So there will be three of us there, three priests, so we'd be delighted to see you all if you want to come pay a visit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.